the valve body out of a Mercedes 722.3 transmission. And I want to talk in this video about doing one of the most common upgrades that you'll hear about on the internet. Now, people call this upgrade the K1 upgrade, and I'm going to disagree. This is the K1. This is commonly referred to as the K1 inside these transmissions. So you really can't call this a K1 upgrade. This is the upgrade we're gonna be talking about here. This is a part that goes into the valve body and this is called an accumulator. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna always refer to this as the K1 accumulator upgrade. You're looking at the original setup here, the original accumulator, and this is the upgrade right here. Now, some of the later transmissions in the early 90s already had the upgrade in them, and you can recognize the difference between the upgrade has a black plastic end cap and the original has kind of, you know, yellow. So what's the difference here? Take a look right here. Look at the big spring. The big spring on the upgrade is shorter and has thicker coils. The center spring looks very close but if you look you can see a little bit difference in the gap the length is the same but there's a difference in the gap and then look at the end spring which goes down into the housing of the accumulator height is a little bit smaller but you can see it has less coils so there it is folks this is something that you can do yourself it's not real difficult and you can actually do it without removing the valve body or dropping the transmission. Next, let's talk about where this is located. <laughs> the valve body has lots of covers on the front and the back. Now, in, as far as orientation, this would be the front of the valve body. So the bell housing of the transmission would start right about here. You would be looking at this. This would be the left side, and you're looking for this square plate right here. People say it's a square plate. You're not looking at the square plate in the back here. You're looking at the lower left side square plate in the front of the valve body. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these four screws and we're going to pull out that assembly. You can see there's not a whole lot of pressure. And then you're going to remove the green piston right there. Notice the orientation. And you'll pull the spring assembly out and notice the orientation there. You can see this goes in to the piston and inside is where that smaller spring is. <laughs> so that's your orientation on an original K2 accumulator spring assembly. If you don't already know, let's take a minute and talk about the purpose of this upgrade. It's to improve shifts between second and third gear particularly if there's a delay or what some people call flaring between two and three. This is a very common issue on these transmissions. You'll go along, it'll shift in a second, and then between second and third, you'll kind of feel this uh, little bit of engine acceleration before it engages. Well, what the accumulators do, particularly this accumulator inside this valve body, it delays the engagement between second and third. So if you didn't have accumulator, it would be abruptly like that when it shifted. So the accumulator softens or transitions that shift to something that's much more pleasurable if I could use that. So what they've done is they've modified the spring pressure and I'm not gonna get into all the specifics of the engineering of these springs, but that's basically what they did. They've modified the spring pressure inside the accumulator to not delay so long. So you'll eliminate that flaring and you're gonna say, yes, that's exactly the problem I have. I'm gonna put this, you know, K1 accumulator upgrade by transmission, all my problems will be solved. Well, uh, not so fast. We'll get into that a little bit later. Along with the differences in the springs, I think they improved these plastic pieces and the way they connect and snap together. These two early style, they just had a little nib on there and they just pop in here and they come out. It's, it's not a big issue because once everything's compressed, you're okay. 
but trying to put it all together and keep it together while you insert it is a different matter. So we're gonna do the new one. Uh, this is the small spring that's gonna go right in here. Now I've already cleaned this. I've inspected the seals. The seals are still soft, so I can reuse them. I'll drop that spring in just like that, okay? Now we're gonna assemble this. And it doesn't matter which end of the, which spring goes where. And now we have to press this together. And this gets a little tricky. You have to press it down and you have to make sure it's lined up properly before you push. And then you want to push straight down. And when you go all the way down, you'll feel it snap in. And now it's locked in place. We're ready to install it back into the valve body. And then now we'll just install the spring assembly into the piston. You make sure, you know, you'd put that smaller spring down inside. And then I'm going to just take a little bit of transmission fluid. And we're going to lube these seals. And then we're going to slide it in. And then I'll get the plate ready here. You can really only get this plate on one way. <laughs> and then hold that in. Get this first screw started. I'm going to run it in by hand until I get close. Okay, I don't think you need to see me tighten down four screws. But the torque for these is 8 newton meters, so be careful. Do not over torque them. They are going in to aluminum threads. Once I tighten those down, you're finished. So that's a fairly simple upgrade. But what if you do this on your transmission, put it all back together, you're all excited, you get in the car, you go down the road, and it's still flaring between second and third. How could that be? You were told that this would fix your problem, but it didn't, why? Some of you are gonna say, hey, can't just adjust the modulator. That's gonna solve all your problems. I see this a lot. Remember, these transmissions are old. <laughs> really old and they're getting tired and I know people try to solve all the problems by you know adjusting the modulator back and forth and thinking they can change the pressure and get rid of the flaring what happens is if you have flaring in just one gear you play around with the modulator you may affect that one but another one might be slipping or jerking and when it gets to the situation where you've got a pronounced flare between second and third only it's probably not modulation pressure so if you've completed this upgrade and it's still flaring between second and third, my humble opinion, it's going to be a problem with this, okay? This is your K1, and it has clutch discs in there. Now, if the clutch discs are worn, well, you can put every upgrade in the book in there, and it's still going to flare. Also, people don't mention this very often, but there are two lip seals in here, and if these lip seals are worn or even cracked, you're going to be losing pressure in the K1 and it won't fully engage the clutches. So what you're looking at here is a cutaway and I'm gonna briefly explain where this K1 is located and what happens when it shifts between second and third. So a quick overview of what's going on here. This is the B2 piston. This is the B1 piston. This is the B2 brake band. This in here is the B1 brake band. And the drum down in there is the K1. This was the K1, okay? And the drum down here is the K2. So when you're going along in second gear, watch this. Both of the brake bands lock onto the K1 and K2 drum. Now, when you shift between second and third, this stays engaged, but this piston comes out, releases the brake band, and at the same time, pressure builds and closes the clutches together. So imagine what happens if you're losing pressure in the drum or your clutch packs are worn, you're going to get the delay between second and third. So don't always assume that doing this K1 accumulator upgrade is gonna solve your problem. 